we want to solve the initial value problem involving a linear second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients. Which means the differential equation fits this form here where a, b, and c are constants. We can solve this type of differential equation using the characteristic equation given here, a r squared plus b r plus c equals zero, where again a, b, and c are the constant coefficients of the differential equation. And then based upon the solutions of this quadratic equation, we can determine the general solution, which will fit one of these forms here, where if we have two distinct real roots, the general solution is in this form. If we have two real equal roots, the general solution is in this form. And finally, if we have two complex roots in the form of alpha plus or minus beta i, then the general solution is in this form here. And then we're also asked to classify the behavior of the solutions. So the first step is to set up the characteristic equation. We'll notice a is equal to one. B, the coefficient of y prime would be zero because there's no y prime term and see the coefficient of y is equal to positive 25. Which means the characteristic equation would be one r squared or r squared plus zero times r, that'd be zero, plus c, which is plus 25, equals zero. So because there's no r term here, we can solve by isolating the r squared term by subtracting 25 on both sides, which will give us r squared equals negative 25. And that is solve for r, we would take the square root of both sides of the equation. Remember, we do have two solutions here. So we'll have the square root of r squared equals plus or minus the square root of negative 25. So we have r equals plus or minus the square root of, we can write negative 25 as negative one times 25. The square root of 25 is five. The square root of negative one is i, so we have r equals plus or minus five i. So we have two imaginary or two complex solutions, which means the general solution is going to be in this form here, where if the solutions are in the form of alpha plus or minus beta i, this tells us that alpha equals zero and beta equals five, which means the general solution would be y of t equals c sub one times e raised to the power of zero times t times cosine of five t plus c sub two times e, again raised to the power of alpha times t, which would be zero times t times the sine of beta times t would be five t. But of course, e to the zero is equal to one, so the general solution simplifies to y of t equals c sub one times cosine of five t plus c sub two times sine five t. Now using the general solution and in the initial conditions shown here, we can find the values of c sub one and c sub two, which will give us our particular solution. So let's work on this on the next slide. For next step, let's find y prime of t. So y prime of t is equal to the derivative of c sub one cosine five t plus c sub two sine five t. So the derivative of c sub one cosine five t would be c sub one times negative sine five t times five, or negative five c sub one sine five t, and then plus the derivative of c sub two sine five t would be c sub two times cosine five t times five, or five c sub two cosine five t. So first using y of pi over 10 equals negative four, we'll substitute pi over 10 for t and negative four for y of t. So that would give us c sub one times cosine of, well five times pi over 10 would be pi over two. And then we'd have plus c sub two times sine, again five times pi over 10 is pi over two. And this must equal negative four. Well, cosine pi over two is equal to zero, and sine pi over two is equal to one. So this tells us that c sub two is equal to negative four. And now using y prime of t, we'll substitute pi over 10 for t and negative 20 for y prime of t. So that would give us negative five times c sub one 
times sine, again, of five times pi over 10, it's pi over two, plus five times c sub two times cosine pi over two, which must equal negative 20. Well, again, cosine pi over two is equal to zero, and sine pi over two is equal to one. So we have negative five times c sub one equals negative 20, which means c sub one is equal to positive four. To form the particular solution, we'll substitute four for c sub one and negative four for c sub two. So the particular solution is y of t equals four times cosine five t minus four times sine five t. So going back to the first slide, again y of t equals four cosine five t minus four sine five t. Now we want to describe the behavior of this particular solution or more generally, the behavior of the general solutions. Whenever the characteristic equation has complex solutions, we can determine the behavior of the solutions by the value of alpha, which is the real part of the complex solution. Where in general, if alpha is positive or greater than zero, that the behavior is oscillating with an increasing amplitude, and that should make sense because if alpha is positive, then as the input variable increases, the exponent on E increases, which would also increase the amplitude. If alpha is less than zero or negative, then the behavior is oscillating with a decreasing amplitude, and again, that should make sense because if we look at the exponent on E, if alpha is negative, then as T increases, the exponent on E gets smaller and smaller in the negative direction, and therefore the amplitude will decrease. And in our case, when alpha is zero, and in our case, when alpha is equal to zero, we would have E raised to the power of zero, which equals one, which means we would have a steady oscillation because the amplitude won't change. And if we were to graph a particular solution in our case, the graph looks like this, verifying we have a steady oscillation because the amplitude remains constant. So our selection here is going to be steady oscillation. I hope you found this helpful.